All right, we have a fun one today. We're going to do an EQ shootout. Just to show you how I set this up, I have two instances of mod 7. One is going just to the output. The other one is going into this signal chain right here. Um, I have the program wired up in such a way, but both programs are the same, to produce noise. The reason I had to set it up like this is because I needed um, an exact algorithmic noise in order to um, be able to phase flip one to get a perfect phase cancellation. So you can see in the output of this one, I have it at the regular phase. But if I go to the um, to the other program, I just had copied them over. Um, let me go to my uh, do, 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 EXI. I have the mixers, output mixer. See, I have the phase flipped right here. Going back to the combi. Um, let me go ahead and uh, just route this one to the left, right for now. So if I, uh, well, actually, to show you what the noise sounds like that th these produce. Now, if I go to this combi, it's the same program, but when it's phase flipped, and if I hit a key, nothing happens because we had a perfect phase cancellation. The reason I did that is so when I check the EQs, I can check to make sure that um, the that I'm comparing them and seeing exactly how they're changing the signal, if at all. And you'll see what I mean in a second. So first thing out of the gate, uh, none of the EQs have latency, neither the mastering, the four band parametric or the seven band um, graphic or GIC as they call it. Um, so the reason I set this up is like, if I, so I have this signal going through and if I get, put this up, um, if I change anything, the noise will get through. So right now, if I hit a trigger, nothing will happen. But if I change something, we'll hear noise because then I'm messing up the per perfect phase cancellation between these two timbres. So going back, if I were to boost up plus seven, but then go to this other EQ, that's exactly the same, and then go minus seven, we again get a perfect phase cancellation. But if I mess that up, we hear noise. So my goal is to check to see if all the curves of all three EQs are exactly the same. And then I, it also helps me check the exact difference between the stereo mastering three band EQ and the, um, the parametric four band EQ. So let's set up this EQ to be the exact opposite of this one. So we're at 1.5K, 1.3Q, let's go down 4 dB, 4.5. 1.5, 1.3, 4 1.5, 1 come on, 4.3, 1.3, and then 4.5, my bad. That makes more sense, 1.3, and then plus 4.5. All right, let's see. We get an exact phase cancellation. If I go up plus 18 and minus 18, it's still an exact phase cancellation. So there seems to be no difference really between the uh, the gain adjustment, the the parametric um, of these, and this. So what's the difference between the parametric four band EQ and the mastering EQ? So far, I can't tell. They both don't have latency. They both seem to have the same curve. Let's see. Well, we do have different gain mods for one. Band two, it, we're able to change the mod via whatever source we like. Um, so that's band two, and we can change this gain mod. Um, we can change the shelving to peaking or low shelving, and we can change the band frequency so first of all, let's check. We go to 20 hertz to 1K. What about this one? We go from 20 hertz to 1K. So again, no difference there, except we are stuck in shelving mode with this one. We can't change it to a different mode. We have plus 18, minus 18. Let's see, 
plus 18 minus 18 so that's exactly the same maybe um let's see our jumps bigger let's see we go we're jumping half db per per click let's see looks to be the same half a db we're jumping in increments of half a db huh what else could be the difference? There has to be a purpose for the for the mastering three band EQ. I'm guessing it's not linear phase because there's no latency added to this one. And that's very odd. The only difference seems to be that we have gain mods in the mastering EQ for the low shelf and the high shelf. And then with the parametric, we have a gain mod for the uh, for the second band, which is always uh, going to be a bell curve. Well, let's move on. <laughs> let's see what uh what we got next. Okay, so I'll choose the gek. Where's our gek? There it is. So now we have this gek, and we can go with, I'll just go with wide one, that's fine. We got this at 1k, boosting up plus 5.5, going up to this one, actually, yeah, 1k, boosting up 5.5, let's go back, let's go down to 1k, boost it up 5.5. So, oh, I actually want to take it down 5.5. Now we should hear some noise. So the cue is different. Let's see if we could find the right cue. Seems to be one. Let me check my meters to see if I'm getting uh, an exact phase cancellation. Yeah, I think that noise is just from the microphone. Um, just to be 100%. Let me turn off the noise from the microphone. Go to audio in and wait. Hit reset. Yeah. So it is an exact phase cancellation. So we know that the GEC is boosting or attenuating in uh, with a curve of one, with a Q of one. Um, with this one, we can change the kind that we're that we're using. We can change it between like different kinds of wide settings, um, half wide. It's pretty pretty neat, um, but a trick that you might not know is that I I didn't even know this until I read it in the manual. You can actually um, cascade three in a row. Let's go with the gek. Go with another gek. Where's my last gek? Where the gek go? There we go. So with three in a row. You can actually make a 21 band gek by just choosing low for the first one, medium or mid for the second one, and then high for the third one. And so if we look, our bands, might as well reset this, our bands go from 80 all the way up to 18. So low mid, high. And you can totally see where this last band ends at 4k. This one begins at 5k. And then this one goes down to 800. And this one goes up to 630. Um, let's check if we can cascade two in a row. I wanted to see that. So what if I chose wide, mid? Hmm. Choose wide low then for this one we'll choose wide high 
So load now goes up to uh, wide low goes up to 4K. And this one starts at 1K, so there would be overlap there. But let's check. Let's see, this goes up to 4K. It starts out at 63. Wide low. It's interesting. This goes down to 80 for low, but then wide low, it actually goes down to 63. Is that the lowest one? Probably. Let's check half wide. Half wide 2. Half wide 3. And then our regular wides. So what if I chose wide low, which goes up to 4K. And then for this one, I chose high. Starts at 5. So yeah, in that way, we get uh, a 14-band gek. It just depends on how you want to spread them out. And then likewise, let's see if we can go with wide high for this one but then low for this one. Now, at the wide high, we go down to 1K, and then this one starts at 630, so that seems to be fairly aligned as well. So you can have them more clustered towards the top. Well, I guess clustered at the bottom too. And then, or you can have them at 21, where if we cascade all three. So that's it for EQs. I um, hope you enjoyed that. It's still super weird to me that there's a that there's no difference between the mastering and parametric. It seems always better to use the parametric in this case, except if you were doing gain mods, you would, that's the only reason it seems to switch between those two. So that was a strange learning experience. I'll see you on the next ones.